Hey there, this is Seth Warris from Channel 9 coming to you from the Washington State Convention Center for the 2017 edition of Build. I'm here with a special guest to talk about Logic Apps. Why don't you introduce yourself, my friend? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm John Fancy. I'm a program manager on the Logic Apps team, uh, part of our larger pro integration uh, team at Microsoft. So Logic Apps are an interesting thing, right? Because it's a different style of doing computation. Why don't you describe what was the genesis of Logic Apps, why it's important, and then maybe we'll look at some demos. Absolutely, yes. So the way I, I usually describe Logic Apps is that it's workflow in the cloud. So it's an engine built for the cloud with everything that that means. Cloud scale, massive uh, compute capabilities, and just you know, high availability built into the platform. And allows you to uh, implement kind of very, uh, very quick productivity environment for building workflows, as well as doing orchestration between different systems, services, and applications, whether they're on-premises or in the cloud, uh, like dynamic CRM or whatever. The yeah. thing that I found on Logic Apps that's interesting is it feels like there's always this bit of functionality that we wished we had, like the glue between all this stuff, and it feels like Logic App fills this really interesting gap between all the other things we do. It, you're absolutely right. I think the, the alternative for like the longest time has been just to write a load of code right. to in integrate and orchestrate all these different things going on. You know, what's really changed the game with this is the whole kind of movement to APIs. Right. Now everything has an API, you snap them together and orchestrate all those APIs through Logic Apps. All right, well, let's get into a demo, and as you're doing stuff, I'm going to turn around and look at the screen, and I, if I have any dumb questions, just say, Seth, that's a dumb question, but I'll answer it anyways, okay? All right. All right, let's do it. What do we got here? All right, so let's just quickly get started, and uh, I'm here in the Azure portal, and I'm just going to create a really uh, uh, simple uh, logic app. So all I do is give this thing a name, I pick a region where I'm going to put it, I'll pin it to the dashboard so I can find it in a second. Now, the first thing I'll call out while it's just uh, spinning away here is that everything, uh, you know, Logic Apps is an Azure resource, which means it's deployable through Azure Resource Manager, right. which means it's just a template, which means that I can uh, use it in the browser here, which is super convenient, but because it's just a template, I can open in Visual Studio, check it into source control, and deploy it from there as well. Holy cow, and that's something that, like, one of the things that maybe you can talk to once we do the demo is, when I, because I built the Logic App, I told you about it, and it was really easy to do. But one of the things that I didn't know how to do was how to look at that inside of Visual Studio. Oh, right. So well, you can help me with that at the end. I, I can totally help you with that. Awesome. So uh, what I see first is I go into uh, this experience where I have a whole pile of templates. So I can very quickly just uh, identify a template that matches my needs and just go from there, or I can right. start from scratch. So in this case, just. Uh, just to do something very quickly, I'm just going to do a HTTP request and response. So straight away, it created that for me. Now, you notice that it says, you know, URL will be generated when I save this, so let's just go ahead and save it. And I get a URL. So straight away, my logic app now has an HTTP endpoint that I can then call. Uh, not super exciting, so uh, let's just open this up a bit. And you notice that I can actually provide a JSON schema for this, right. so I can schematize. Uh, messages coming in, and then I get a token picker that allows me to pull values out. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, though. What I'm going to do so I can actually just open a browser up is I can pick the verb, so I can say get. I can also parameterize this, so I can say, well, let's put in uh, a file. This is just using the URI template type scheme. And, you know, I'm going to get a file, right? That's what I'm doing here. You guessed that, right? Just looking at the, right. at the file name. So just to show the, uh, the power of logic apps, uh, and see all the different connectors I have. You know, I have a whole pile of you know, over 140 of these things now. Right. Um, and one of the cool things I can do is actually access the, my on-premises file system. And that is a file system on my laptop. So if I just type in file, you can see all the different file type connectors we have. And I can see file system get file content. So let's just pick that. And you can see it automatically says it's connected using my file connector. I created that earlier to point to my machine. Now, what I can then do is I can click this little folder and I can see the file system. Now, I expose this when I create the connection. I root it in a particular folder, provide the permissions. You can see all the different file folders I have. And I could you know, pop over here and this is you know, Windows Explorer. Here's my file system. So uh, what I could do is say, well, I'm going to get that file. You see, I don't just get the request body. I actually see right. the file name as well. It's parameterized that. And I can just return that back again, see what I mean by the token picker sure. experience. It understands what steps I've got and just lets me map them between them. And if I save that down, then I could grab that URL and open another window. Now, 
I've got this uh, great big URL, but in the middle of here somewhere, I should see uh, file, file, name, right file name, right. So let's just put in a file name. Let's call it, oops, let's call this build.txt. Uh, now, I don't have a file there, so let's go ahead and create one of these things. So this is me building a serverless web server on Logic Apps, in case you were wondering. Oh, my so. goodness. <laughs> so I can just create a text document. I can call that build. I can open that up and just say, you know, hello, build. Save it down. Pop back to the browser. Hit the button. It's going to run the Logic App, because I made an HTTP request, grab the file from my local file system, and show it in the browser. OK, so now <laughs> I need to slow down, because there's a kind of questions I have. Let's go to the, let's go to the Logic App yep. Designer. So that first thing that's happening is that's a request that's happening, and it's coming into your Logic App. So this Logic App is going to be triggered anytime anyone does an HTTP GET. Yep. Exactly. Holy cow, because this could be a new way of writing APIs, for example. Absolutely. And uh, a Logic App uh, can even uh, you know, be surfaced as an API. We have integration with API management. You can import a Logic App definition, and it'll create an API in front of that as well. That's amazing. And so what's happening is it's parameterized using the file front slash file name. That comes in as part of the request, and that's passed into the get file content. So but the thing that's confusing to me is that this is happening in the cloud, somehow on your box. So let's talk about connectors right. and what those mean. Right, yeah. So um, the technology that makes that possible is called the on-premises data gateway. This is a, a, a application I install on my local machine or on a server on-premises. And that uh, creates an outbound connection to Azure and allows me to create these connections that enable data to flow. So I can you know, access my local file system, or I can access a SQL Server database, an Oracle database, a SharePoint server, even BizLock server. We have connectivity to all of these different first-class applications and data sources on-premises. Right. So when we talk about connectors, it's a larger sort of principle that works in Logic Apps, we can connect to any number of things. Absolutely, yeah. These are, as I said, these, there's like 140 of these things now. We ship them all the time. Every week we push out new connectors. So a connector could be anything from you know, my on-premise file system to dynamic CRM, SAP. The Twilio. Uh, or Twilio, exactly. Dropbox, OneDrive, uh, Google Drive. We have connectors for you know, a whole pile of things, even including things like um, traditional kind of enterprise integration like EDI and, uh, wow. and XML processing and things like that as well. We have so if someone wants to make a connector that works inside of Logic, Apps, is there a specific way to do that as well? So to build a connector that works inside Logic Apps, you can actually build it as an API app. Right. So you build an API app, uh, and you create a trigger. Then you can just uh, search for API app, and you can see the API apps you have deployed to your subscription. And you can start triggering Logic Apps from the logic that you write in your own API. So you might have already created a number of APIs that you can actually trigger inside of a Logic Absolutely. App. Absolutely, yeah. We're all about reuse. You, know, you probably have a whole bunch of things. You know, the other thing you can do is call out to an Azure function. Maybe you've got functions already. Maybe you've got some class libraries you want to wrap up as a function. Just reuse what you've got and make that an API and call that from Logic Apps as well. This is pretty cool. And so now what it happens is when the request comes in, it moves it down to the git file content that uses the connector that connects to your device, and that connector will actually return whatever file comes in and file name, right? Absolutely. So let's go down one more. So that gets the file content, and then the response is what the, what the uh, Logic App will give back in return. That's right. OK. So this, this could be arbitrarily long as well. Absolutely, yeah. And, and some of them are. Some of the customers are doing some awesome things with arbitrarily long logic apps. Awesome. Yeah, the other thing they mentioned is like, this is just one type of trigger, is that you know, somebody's making a call. But a trigger could be uh, time-based. It could, uh, I want, may want it to run every five minutes. Okay. Or it could be event-based. I may want to fire a logic app as soon as a message arrives on a queue. I so see. you can drive it however you want to drive it, you know, either passively or actively or poll or push. So that's interesting. So let's talk about the triggers. You mentioned that there's time-based. You mentioned that there's, uh, there's uh, like this one obviously is a request-based. You mentioned there's a trigger-based. Are there any other kinds of triggers? I think that's it. Okay. Time, yeah, time-based or occurrence-based, event-based, and polling, really. So awesome. I, say I have an FTP server. I just want to reach out to that every hour and grab all the new files on that server, pull them down, and process them, yeah. Awesome. So you had another demo, because obviously this is a simple one. Let's get into one yeah. that's a little bit more so complicated. Th this, is, this is more complicated. So, uh, so we get into the logic of logic apps, right? right? This is great, but this is just a sequence of steps, right? And I probably want something more complicated right. than that. So what I have here is actually two things. I have three logic apps I'm going to show you very quickly. This first one is going to do what I just mentioned and do some EDI processing. It's going to um, sit on an FTP folder. I'm going to watch it every 30 seconds and wait for a new uh, file to appear. 
And it's going to be in this flat file format. Uh, X12 is one of those protocols that kind of runs the world. It does invoice and order processing and has done for the last 40 plus years. So where is it looking for a file to be modified? Is it on your device? Is it using No, it's on, it's on my FTP server. OK, FTP. Yeah, yeah. Got it. So I've got an FTP client here. So I can just uh, drag and drop this from my local system to my FTP server. It's just going to upload that and appear. That's going to trigger this logic app, which is going to decode that file. So just to kind of show you what's going on before I show you how beautiful it looks afterwards, if I open this thing up, oh, yeah, this is it. Oh, yeah, that's not cool at now, all. No, it's not cool at all. But you know, Logic Apps understands the format of this and can turn this into a beautiful JSON document that then allows you to call all these other APIs just by mapping these values to. So them. this is automatically built in, this for format of files. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. You can see you can kind of make sense of it when you squint it a bit more. You know, sure. it's not just ones and zeros. You can see I have it's actually in order. So I have three line items. I have a small uh, widget, I have a medium widget, and I have a large widget. I got some stuff like the company name Fabricam. Uh, and some other things. So what it does is it goes through this decode component, which turns it into XML. And what I'm going to do then is turn that into a canonical XML format. The reason I'm going to do that is because I've got another logic app, which is going to do something even cooler than this, and let me actually pass in an image of an order. So forget this flat file stuff. Right. And that one sits over here. Whoops. So let's just open that up. I've got it uh, in the run history, so you can see what's going on. Uh, this one um, is going to, when a new email arrives, is going to fire a logic app, and it's got an attachment. So let me just let me just send that in because it takes a minute or so. So I'm just in a you know an email client here. I'm just in Outlook, and I'm going to send myself an order, and I'll show you what th this order looks like. It looks very different to the other one, and I'll just attach that. And I'm just going to pick a file. Here we go. And hopefully you can see what this thing yeah, looks like, like a, right? It's got my thumb in it and everything, just to sort of demonstrate that uh, it is a real, uh, a real image. Wow, my machine's on a go slow here. Crazy. So this is like a real picture of an order. Yes. Got it. With, a, with my thumb. It's my <laughs> thumb, everybody. Uh, it's beautiful thumb. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I'm just going to attach that to this. It's going to upload it. Now, what's going to happen here uh, is, a, is the same process, but a bit different. So I've, got a, I've actually got another logic app which is going to process the orders from either of these two locations, either that FLAV file format converted to XML or this image, which right. we're going to OCR. Now, the thing when I, when I kind of send it in this way is I don't know who this guy is anymore, right? I've just received an email with an order in it. So uh, going back to what this logic app is doing, the first thing it's going to do is do some optical character recognition. It takes that image and parses it out. I'm actually calling an Azure function here to clean it up because I'm not interested in everything in that because it kind of gives me all the kind of labels and everything right. else. Uh, and uh, we have a few data operations like parse JSON. Again, I provide a schema for this, and this turns what I had you know, originally as an image. It's going to convert that to JSON. And the reason for doing that is because it makes it very easy to do things like a lookup of the customer. Are they an existing customer, right? I just pass in the company name. You can see it now right. understands. This was an image, right? It understands now all the different fields in the image. And this is where the logic comes in. I say, well, you know, if they're a new customer because it returned you know, of the return code, I'm going to send them a DocuSign contract. The terms and conditions, because I don't know who this guy is. Um, so they're going to send them the contract. They're going to get an email. So this logic app is running. Um, and when they sign that contract and send it back, it's going to complete add them as a new customer, and then run the, uh, the sort of uh, common logic app, which is this process order that both of them call, uh, to send the order, which is just this guy here. So these two different logic apps, one calling from FTP, one uh, picking up email, which has got images in it, then spins over here. And you can see this is using XML. So we've got an XPath expression here. They're both in this canonicalized order format, spins around all the order lines, and then puts them in a SQL database. Wow. I mean, that's <laughs> crazy, right? So here's a question <laughs> I have. As I'm looking at this, I'm like, wow, traditionally that would have taken a Oh, you got an email back. I got an email back already, yeah. Oh my goodness, let's see the document. <laughs> so let's open this up, yeah, just, just super quickly. Uh, I need to agree to uh, electronic signatures, and you know, I get a sales contract back. I'm just going to adapt, uh, adopt and sign that. Uh, I think uh, that's interesting. For some reason, I can't see the button at the bottom of the screen. Huh. So as, what it's doing is yeah. it literally went through the entire process and said, yeah, and as soon as you sign it and put it back, it's going to be done. Exactly, yeah. And it's then going to run through the rest of the logic app here and uh, add them as a new customer and then add the order that it's processed. So as I'm looking at this, here's a couple of questions. So the first, let's go back to the first, uh, the, the other one, not that one. 
This one. No, yes, that one. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the third one. <laughs> this one. This, this, this one is processing orders from both FTP and from okay, email. Okay, so yeah. the one with the other one that had the if statement. I want to see that one. I think oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, okay, so let's scroll up. As I'm looking at this, we'll scroll up one more time. Okay, so the question is, it feels like there's a tons of things that you can put in the middle of these things. Because the one I saw was DocuSign, which clearly... I don't know, did we write that or was that something they provided? No, so that, that's something we work with a lot of um, third party services. So uh, sometimes we write them, sometimes they write them, and we onboard their connector into our service. And uh, you know, in the case of DocuSign, we worked with those guys, worked around with their API, and we publish a connector, and then everybody can use it. You know, and these are connectors that are shared not just with Logicast, but across Power Apps and Flow as well. You know, so we have I a standard see. set of connectors. So at what point is it like, okay, should I do this in a Logic app, or should I just write some code for it, or is it really just a matter of choice, preference? I, I guess I would say that if we have functionality already, then why would you write code? Right. But we totally understand that sometimes you have to write code and you right. need to write code. Uh, use Azure Functions for that, use API apps for that, and just plug them into the framework, and you can just call those just like they're any other uh, connector or service. The other thing that was interesting that sort of added a little bit to what you said is it, you can, you can have in the middle connectors that are API apps, but then you mentioned something about Azure Functions. Tell us about how Azure Functions can be integrated into Logic Apps. So Azure Functions, yeah. I mean, if I just come down the bottom here and say add a new action, uh, it's going to pull up that box again and show me all the different things. And right at the top here, I can choose an Azure Function. It understands the Azure Functions I have available, you know, my subscription. So I can just kind of click down and see the list of functions. I would click on it, but you'll see like a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I just pick the Azure Function, and then I just provide the input parameters to that function, and I'm done. And then it knows about the stuff that's coming out, too. Exactly, yeah. Interesting. And functions, you know, because these guys have just recently shipped uh, Swagger support and a few other things, it's like, yeah, it understands the shape of the API. So this is like a really fast way of like proving out an idea. Well, yeah, I mean, it's funny. A lot of people start with this and go, oh, it's a great prototyping tool. And then once they finish building their application, they realize it's not a prototyping tool. They just built their application. They just did it. <laughs> I mean, and that's so quick. Uh, it's yeah. like, well, why wouldn't I productionize this? And the interesting thing is like, like, I love that. Like, why wouldn't you just use it? If it's done, why would you write something over again if it just works? Exactly, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, for people that are interested, how much is this going to cost me if I'm using it? So the, the way this works is it's a consumption-based model, like you know most other Azure services. So uh, you pay for you know each time it runs, basically. Right. Um, so if you don't use it, so you don't, there's no cost for you know, uh, to create logic app definitions and have them sitting there. Um, and if they don't run, it doesn't cost anything. So you the pay for the work that gets done. The last thing, and we only have about two minutes because this has seriously been fascinating. Mm -hmm. How do I move this into my dev box in a way that I can sort of, like, because you said there's something you can do locally as well. Yeah, so uh, I think I have this open. So just this is Visual Studio 2017. We just shipped support for 2017 along with our friends in Functions. Okay. Um, and this is what I was talking about being just a, just a template. So it's just a JSON definition. So when you open the designer up, you know, I can just right click this thing and say open with Logic Apps Designer. And I will see the same designer as I saw in the browser, except the designer is actually hosted on my box. And can I run it locally? So not yet. You can't, you can't run it locally. But what you can do is you can uh, you, see, you see it's just a blank logic app. I can right. pick a template. You can right click deploy this. You can, uh, you can actually run it inside Visual Studio. You can see all the steps that ran and debug it. Right. Um, and you can check it into source control and manage it and deploy it. That's awesome, because that's the part that I did not know how to do. The last thing that I wanted to, s to talk about, and we only have about 90 seconds, is how do I know if, when this thing's run, when it's failed? Is there a way to know what's going on? Yeah, so just super quickly, let's see what all of this stuff was doing. Let's look at this FTP one. If I scroll over to the left-hand side, I see the run history. Uh, I, I see, see each one that ran. I can open up the last one that we just did a few minutes ago and see what happened. And it actually shows the Logic Apps Designer with a little check mark next to oh, each one. Oh, I see. Now, the neat thing about this is I can open these up, and I can see the inputs and outputs of each one of wow. these steps. So I could say, well, you know, what was the folder that it picked the file up from? And, what was the, and you see the file content, even, you know, that flat file that I pushed in. So well, it's very, awesome. very easy to sort of see what's going on and what happened historically as well. Well, like I said, I, I, started, I used this one night to do something that was crazy, and I ended up sending text messages when things appeared. And it was... Pretty magical for me, and my wife thought it was awesome too. She's awesome. like, wow, you're a really Great. good coder. <laughs> like, I got you fooled. This man over here helped me. Thanks for helping me in my Thanks. marriage, my friend. You, you John, bet. Thank thanks you. so much for being here. We've been learning all about Logic Apps. It's pretty amazing. You should look at it too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you after.
the break. Thanks. <laughs>